beautiful young woman on the run, seeking refuge in a strange land. A prince transformed into a raging beast. A forgotten prisoner with the key to a kingdom's destiny. It sounds like the start of a children's story, but this is no fairy tale. It's history, part of the story of Armenia's conversion to Christianity. It tells what happened when the power of a king came up against the power of faith. Our story begins in Rome, in the time of the Emperor Diocletian. The Roman Empire had never been friendly to Christians, but Diocletian would enact the last, largest, and bloodiest of its attacks on Christianity. By the late 3rd century AD, Christians in the empire were preparing for the worst. Among them was a small community of nuns and a young woman named Haripsime. Led by their abbess, Gayane, Haripsime and her holy sisters fled from Diocletian to the most remote edge of Roman influence, the distant kingdom of the Armenians. They were hopeful that they might find a welcome there. For generations earlier, the Christian movement had gained a foothold among the people. When Christ's apostles, Thaddeus and Bartholomew, brought the young faith to Armenia. The sisters settled on the outskirts of the capital city of Varashabad, taking refuge in an old vineyard, where they eked out a meager livelihood. But it wasn't long before they came under the eye of the Armenian state, led by King Dirtad. By every standard of the day, Dirtad was a great man. He was a great athlete, a champion wrestler in the ancient Olympic Games. He was a great soldier who had led armies to victory and had defeated enemy warriors in personal combat. He was a romantic figure, heir to the glorious dynasty of King Ashak the Great, who had won the hand of Ashken, princess of the Alan. His passions ran deep, but so did his hatred. Like the Roman Emperor, King Dirtad was a persecutor of Christians. He had already imprisoned a Christian preacher in a deep pit and kept him locked up in the darkness as an example to others. Years earlier, when his father, King Khosrov, was assassinated, Dirtad had clawed his way back to the Armenian throne with the aid of Diocletian. So when the Roman emperor told him that some Christian refugees were hiding out in his kingdom, Dirtad had them tracked down and brought before him. But something prevented him from turning Gayane and Haripsime and the nuns over to Rome. The stories say that Dirtat conceived an obsessive passion for Haripsime whose piercing beauty had not escaped the attentions of Diocletian himself. Dirtat wanted to possess her, not just physically, but exclusively, body and soul. He offered to take Ripsime as another wife, to make her a queen. But the king was asking for the one thing she could not give. For Ripsime's heart and soul belonged to another. She was married already, as a holy bride of Christ. As in any marriage, the vow she had made was sacred, precious to her. King Dirtad was not used to hearing the word no. His impulse was to use force to get his way. But it was no benefit 
to abuse and disfigure the woman he desired. So instead, the king tried to frighten Hripsime into accepting him by torturing her companion, Gayane. Before Hripsime's horrified eyes, her friend was subjected to the most excruciating torture. But Gayane did not beg or plead, even unto death. Her testimony to Hripsime in word and deed was to stand firm in her faith. And Dirtat, watching the entire ordeal, witnessed the mysterious inner strength that matched and surpassed his strength of body. Frustrated, enraged, the king finally lashed out at Hripsime. Her torments, the torture she suffered, they're too horrible to tell. How could the mind of man conceive of such unspeakable things? But the chronicles say that in her moment of deepest fear, Hripsime heard a voice from heaven. Be strong, it told her. Don't lose heart. I too went on this journey and I am with you now. She recognized it as the voice of Christ. With a faithful heart, Hripsime followed her Lord along the path he had once walked, the path of obedience, suffering, and death. At last, King Dirtat had destroyed the very thing he loved, and as the madness of spiteful violence overcame him, he gave orders to kill the other nuns, nearly 40 women whose only crime was the solidarity of their sisterhood in Christ. The dismembered bodies of Hripsime, Gayane, and their sisters were left to rot in the vineyard. But they were recovered by their fellow Christian compatriots. Reverently interred in the ground, the burial place became a holy site, a place of pilgrimage and memory for Armenia's Christians where Hripsime's purity of spirit, her strength of heart, still inspire young couples embarking on the promise of married life. As for the king, in the storm of death and destruction he incited, Dirtat became something less than human. The stories tell us that he became a wild beast. Mindless, speechless, eating the earth and tearing his flesh. No court physician, no priest of the pagan temples could heal the wretched king. Only a miracle could save him. And the key to that miracle was a forgotten prisoner hidden away and barely alive in the deepest, darkest pit in the kingdom.